Okay, so you're curious about kettlebell training. The best place to start is with what Mark Rifkin, Master RKC, calls the center of the kettlebell universe, the kettlebell swing. I'm going to back up so you can see my entire body. First, I'm going to demonstrate what a swing looks like. very explosive and it's very powerful. So let's break it down. You're going to start out with your weight in your heels. Your shoulders are down and back. Think about putting your shoulder blades in your back pocket. So roll them down and back. You're going to put your hips back like you're reaching for a chair that's way too far behind you. So if you take your hands in blades and kind of chop your hips back, your knees are going to bend but they're not going to come forward. So it really is like you're reaching for that chair that you can't quite reach. The bell starts out in front of you, and the very, very first movement is an aggressive hike back. So it's a hike, and then you snap your hips, and the bell floats. It's two distinct parts. Hike, snap. Hike, snap. Everything else sort of happens. This whole movement is driven with your hips, your butt, your hamstrings. You're going to feel it in your abs. But it's very explosive, and it's very dynamic. Hike, snap. Hike, Step. Now let's talk about breathing for a second. You want to make the breathing match the movement pattern in the swim. So at the bottom, sniff in during your hike, and then forcefully exhale during your snap. So it's... Two reasons that you do this. Number one, it's safer. Now all those muscles around your spine are engaged and tightened when you're snapping. All this is tight. Number two, by making the movement and your breathing match, it's going to make your swing a lot crisper. Try to just breathe that way and make your swing lazy. It's almost impossible. This is an incorrect swing. This is a correct swing. Remember those two parts. Pipe, step. Okay, now you've seen how to swing and how to breathe with the swing. Pause the video. Go grab your kettlebell. Try a few, maybe five sets of 20. A lot of times people come in the gym and they say, well, I understand how kettlebells are strength training, but how are they cardio? You're about to find your answer. Do some swings, come back in a day or two, and then we'll troubleshoot. Okay, now we're back for troubleshooting. Chances are, a day or two later, you're going to be sore. But where you're sore can tell you a lot about your form and how you're doing. If you're sore on your posterior chain, your hamstrings, your butt, your abs even, but not your low back, you're probably doing your swing right. Congratulations. If you are feeling it mostly in your quads, in front of your thighs, there's a good chance that what's going on is you're letting your knees come forward and you're using the front of your legs versus the back side. So one thing you can do if you find yourself letting your knees come forward, take your coffee table, walk up to it, put your feet under it to where your knees are right at the edge. And you just want to get the feeling, obviously without a kettlebell, of letting your hips come back but your knees not come forward. So do this a few times, step away from the coffee table, do a few swings, it should feel the same. If you come up to your coffee table and you let your knees come forward, that's what's going to happen. If you are feeling it mostly in your low back, or a lot in your shoulders, you're probably pulling the bell on the way up, or letting it fall way too far down at the bottom. Really visualize making your thighs push your forearms away. So push your forearms off of your thighs with your hips. So this is what's happening. If you find yourself pulling and then snapping, you've already done a lot of the work with your upper back and your lower back, and then your hips come into play last. It's not really safe. You're doing too much work with your back. Make the whole movement driven by your hips. If you're not sure if you're doing this or not, a good way to try it out is to do something that we call a towel swing. You're going to take your belt and move it a quarter turn so the handle is facing this way. You're going to take your towel, just a regular hand towel, loop it around the handle, choke up as close as you possibly can to the handle. You're going to hike it back and snap it up. As long as your arms are not in the picture and you're all hips, it's going to look just like an extension of the towel. If you're not, you're pulling, it's going to be this weird bobbly thing. 
and it's going to be awkward. So until you can really take your arms and your back out of the picture, it's going to be really awkward. So do that until it feels right and the bell is just an extension of the towel. If you're feeling it in your low back, another thing that could be happening is at the bottom, you're letting it swing too low. You really want to keep it right under your groin. So a lot of times if you start here and you get tired, then you'll start swinging lower and lower. There are a few analogies that work. Um, one that I like is imagine that you're dropping the bell through your stomach and getting your hips out of the way. If you like football, which I do, imagine that you're a center hiking to the quarterback right underneath you. Or a really simple one that I heard of the San Diego RKC was imagine that your legs are a triangle. And this is the big triangle, and from your knees up, it's a little triangle. Always try to keep it in the little triangle. So whatever analogy works for you, use that. Just make sure that you're always keeping the belt right underneath you to make your swing really efficient and to protect your lower back. Now we're going to do a couple of variations. The first variation is a one-arm swing. Just like it sounds, it's a swing with one arm. One of the beautiful things about kettlebell training is that everything builds on itself. So you don't have to relearn different principles. You pretty much apply the same principles throughout training. So just like with a two-arm swing, your weight will be in your heels, your shoulders are down and back, chop your hips back, you're going to grab the kettlebell, looks remarkably similar to a two-handed swing. Three things you really want to keep in mind in a one-arm swing. We keep saying shoulders down and back in the kettlebell world. It's really, really important in a one-arm swing. The second you let that disconnect, not only are you leaking all that power that you're generating out of this weak joint, but you're letting the bell pull you forward. It's no longer saying you're no longer in control. So if you find yourself here at the top of your swing, pull your shoulder in. You want to keep it in the entire time. So from the beginning, your shoulder is always connected right in the socket. Second thing to keep in mind, good form is keeping your hand out to the side. So if you find yourself getting tired and wanting to push off your thigh, it's just bad form. Keep your arm out to the side. Last thing, and it's just a minor, minor detail that you probably won't even appreciate until you get into some heavier and heavier bells. But at the bottom, making sure to keep your shoulders still connected. If you do a quarter turn with your thumb, it's not a huge movement. It just takes a little bit of pressure off your neck and shoulders. So really pay attention to keeping your shoulder in the socket. It's just a little rotation. It should feel a lot better all through here. So again, hike, snap, hike, snap, and of course, you can do the same thing on the other side. Hike, snap, hike, snap. Second variation, alternating swing. All it is is a right hand swing with a left hand swing with a right hand swing, with a left hand swing. Again, everything's the same. Shoulders down and back, weighted heels, hips back. First movement to hike back. <laughs> Only difference is now you're trading hands at chest level. Really be careful not to try to train at the bottom, because if you watch my back, if you train at the bottom, there's a good chance you can round it. Rounded backs aren't very safe. You want to keep it straight, flat, and always trade at the top. A good way to do that is to mirror with your free hand, so you're always there. And that way you don't have to think, oh wait, I gotta grab it, um, oh wait, I gotta grab it. You're always gonna be there. So you learn two arm swings, right hand and left hand swings, and all things. Congratulations, you've just learned the foundation exercise of kettlebell training, the kettlebell swing. Kettlebells are a great standalone program. They're strength, cardio, mobility all at the same time. They're also a great complement to other athletics. So however you decide to use them, I hope you continue with kettlebell training.